If you wanted a physics focused VR hack and slash game, then you add Blade and Sorcery in Hellsplit Arena. But over the last few months, we've had some new contenders. Grimlord, Battle Talent, and Undead Citadel. So let's test them all and see which ones are worth your time and money. Let's start with the most important part, the combat. First, I'm gonna compare slash attacks. These are effective in Blade and Sorcery to the head, but you don't get much reaction from the enemy. It can feel like it's making very little impact as the enemy only really makes a little yelp, but not much movement. The enemies react way more in Hellsplit Arena with them staggering in the direction that they get hit. It feels like you're really connecting with them as they react well to hits. It's also much easier than Blade and Sorcery to decapitate and chop off limbs. In Grimlord, the enemies in this game are tanks. You have to put a lot of effort into your swings and there is no way to get a quick kill. It's all about chipping away at enemy health. They don't really react or move much to swings. Battle talent hits register even with light arm movement. So I would definitely recommend to the developers to increase the amount that you have to swing for the weapons to register damage. Enemy reactions are generally a bit poor, similar to Blade and Sorcery, with not really much reaction. Undead Citadel work really well. It's easy to chop off limbs and heads. Enemies do react to hits, which makes it feel like you're making a good connection. Stab attacks are very effective in Blade and Sorcery, usually cause an instant death to the body or head. The blade has a good amount of resistance going in and out, and some enemies have armor, so you can't stab with those. Stabbing is very effective on zombies with no armor in Hellsplit Arena, but it doesn't work on skeletons or chainmail zombies. It feels like they've actually improved this since last time I played it. As before, it felt like butter, but now the blade will get stuck, making it feel more realistic, and it can leave you exposed while you get the blade out. Grimlord's stabby stabs can be effective, but weapons don't really pierce or get stuck. A stab to the face can cause an enemy to fall to the ground, giving you a chance to pound them on the floor until they die. But just like with the slash attacks, don't go expecting to get any quick kills. Battle talent stabs can be effective, especially to the head, but body stabs can require more than one on most enemies. Stabs are also surprisingly effective on skeleton enemies. There are just so many different types in this game that you have to handle differently. Lots have got armor, so you can't actually always get away with an Eevee stab kill. Undead Citadel stabs are very effective, with most enemies dying with one stab to anywhere in the body. This is the easiest way to kill them, including the skeletons, which just act like a reskin of the more fleshy guys. The blades don't really penetrate or get stuck, making it very easy to blast through multiple enemies one after the other. One of the issues of these types of games are walking stabs. This is when you hold your arm out with a sword, and you simply walk into them by pressing up on the thumbstick, so let's try doing that in these games and see how they handle it. In Blade and Sorcery it does work, and it can get very janky. The AI can sometimes dodge, but overall non-armoured enemies can be taken out easily like this. It also works very well on unarmoured zombies in Hellsplit Arena, but it doesn't always kill them, so multiple stabs can be needed. Some enemies dodge a lot, which makes it harder to just walk into them. Walking stabs simply don't work in Grimlord, so props to the developers. It seems that you really have to thrust the sword quickly to get it to register, and walking into enemies with your sword out simply deflects off them. Battle talent also doesn't really work. Most of the time it just deflects off them, so you need more force than walking speed to actually get them to stab. Undead Citadel again doesn't work, and it just deflects off enemies. I think the amount of thrust or force required for Blade and Sorcery in Hellsplit Arena to stop this from happening. The other issue is the waggle. This is when you hold out a weapon and simply waggle your wrist to get lots of hits very quickly. This doesn't really work in Blade and Sorcery. The game requires a good range of motion to swings to register impact, and the weapons have got some dampening so they don't move really quickly with a simple wrist wiggle. Waggling does work with all enemies in Hellsplit Arena, so they could do with increasing the amount of movement of the weapons before it had registered. It generally isn't the best tactic though, as the enemies will still attack you, so it's best to fight with larger swings and move in from a distance. Waggle attacks don't work in Grimlord, it just simply doesn't register hits, and just like with the stab attacks, it requires a wide, faster swing for it to register a hit. You just end up taking lots of damage as the enemy keeps attacking you. Waggling can work in battle talent, but not massively effective, but as mentioned, even light taps can register damage, so that needs tweaking. Undead Citadel doesn't work, it won't register hits waggling your wrist, and needs a wider swing. None of these games can really be waggled through though, because even where it does work and register damage, it still isn't as effective as actually putting in the effort and swinging properly. Let's talk about blocking and parrying attacks. In Blade and Sorcery, you can block attacks, but you can't stagger them, and overall, there isn't much benefit over just going in for a quick stab. Hellsplit Arena parrying works great in this game. Blocking attacks staggers the enemy for a short time, 
giving you a chance to get in for a counter hit. In Grimlord, parrying is pretty much essential in this game, and it was clearly built for it, with zombie type enemies really projecting the swings, giving you a chance to block, opening the enemy up for a hit. Enemies can also knock your weapons out of your hands when you try to block attacks. This is when you only move your sword to block. You have to swing into the attack properly to block it. Just holding your weapon out isn't enough, which is great game design in my opinion. In Battle Talent, blocks don't seem to stun enemies, and a lot of the time, it pushes you back, so it's only for defence. You need to be a lot more aggressive in this game. In Undead Citadel, blocking attacks does actually stagger them back, so it has some benefit. Weapons are breakable, so blocking a lot will break them faster. Let's have a look at throwing weapons. Maybe it's just me, but I find throwing weapons in Bayon Sorcery really difficult. I always seem to end up throwing them on the floor, and even when it connects, it doesn't feel very satisfying. It feels much better in Hellsplit Arena, and when the axe connects, the way it sticks in and the way the enemy reacts feels very satisfying. Throwing also feels great in Grimlord. Throwing an axe seems to go where I want it to most of the time, and when you hit an enemy in the head, it sticks in and they fall to the floor. You can then distance grab it from them while they walk around for a second hit. It's not bad in battle talent, and it can be useful, and weapons do fly at a pretty good speed, but it doesn't feel as good as Hellsplit or Grimlord, but it does feel better than Blade and Sorcery in my opinion. It does still lack that impact of the other two, with enemies kind of flinching when hit, unless they're low on health and you kill them. In Undead Citadel, there are some throwing knives that you can throw, which will go quickly and cause damage, but other weapons just fall to the ground. Magic is also part of some of these games. Blade and Sorcery has magic, which you can select from different spells like fireballs, then you hold the trigger and you can throw your hands forward. You can also use spells on weapons to temporarily make them stronger. There's no cooldown or mana, so you can use magic as much as you want, which makes it very powerful and unbalanced. Hellsplit Arena has potions, which you place next to a weapon to add flames or ice. Grimlord has got mana and the option to build a mage class, which is less armor, but more mana. You've got staffs with different jewels on the end, you can then wave them around to conjure fireballs or ice crystals and fire a projectile out of the end. Because you don't have infinite mana, you can't just spam these attacks. You gain more mana by finding potions to drink and you can see your mana and health on your forearms which is a great way to keep an eye on your levels. Battle Talent has also got magic with spells you can cast like lightning and the wind. Like Grimlord, you've got mana, so you can't infinitely spam magic. This also works for other ranged weapons like pistols or these cool hand swords which have got guns built into them. You gain mana by killing with melee attacks which is a great way to balance things out and it forces the player to be aggressive. Undead Citadel has got potions you can drink which do things like increase strength or freeze enemies on impact. Enemy AI is also very important in these games. In Blade and Sorcery, 1v1 is no challenge. The enemy generally keeps the distance. Running on medium difficulty you end up with a lot more to fire at once, which can make things harder. Enemies always seem to stay in front of you. I tried moving around to see if some of them would try to move around the side and maybe hit me from behind. Enemies will have different gear. Some are archers, some use magic attacks, which you can block with your sword, but overall the enemy variety is a little lacking in this game. The AI movement is very clunky, and I find this game is the most janky, despite it being the oldest and most popular. You always end up finding yourself in some janky situation when things get really clunky. You can also grab enemies and they will just let you hold them and don't try to break free or fight back. Overall, I find that AI, enemy variety and animations poor in Blade and Sorcery and really should be better when you consider how long this game's been out for and how many sales it's had. In Hellsplit Arena, again, 1v1 is very easy. But if you get a few at a time, it becomes much more of a challenge. Especially if you get a ranged archer, as they're pretty accurate, so you want to try and take them out first. The enemies will also dodge around a lot, and they even try to come at you from the sides, forcing you to have to reposition and think about your surroundings more. I experienced much less jank in this game compared to Blade and Sorcery, and overall I find the enemy animations, movement, and how they react to hits much more satisfying. Grimlord's AI depends on the enemy. Early in the game, most of the enemies are these zombie types. They're very slow and give large warnings before the attack, but they can still be a problem when you get a group. Like mentioned before, the enemies in this game are tanks, so you have to whittle down the health and pick them off, and I found myself really conscious of my surroundings and thinking about my spacing much more than any of the other games. There are some archers, so you want to get out of line of sight. Some enemies have got small shields and some have got larger ones, and you also get a dodge button in this game 
which can be really useful for sidestepping an enemy attack and getting a hit in while they're exposed. There are guys with a large two-handed axe which have got a much longer range, so parrying these attacks is essential. You also get some fully armoured knights to fight, who are much faster and harder to kill, so you're best off trying to avoid them if you can. You're going to end up in battles with enemies much longer. Sometimes you back off to funnel them into a choke point because they don't take it in turns to attack, so you can't just rush in and go ham on them. You have to move and strike with purpose and think much more about how you're going to handle each fight. I also experience very little janking fights as the enemies are very solid and they won't stumble or jitter around. They've also got boss fights which can be very challenging. Battle Talents AI is a mixed bag in this game. There are so many enemy types in this game all with different moves and attacks and it has by far the most variety. Sometimes they can be a bit dumb and they just stand there letting you hit them, especially early in the game. But it soon ramps up with lots of enemies, some will dodge and roll around, some fire orbs at you that you can block, some fly straight towards you, the movement on some can be a bit clunky, and like Blade and Sorcery there are times when things get clunky and a bit janky. This is like the opposite of Grimlord, it's very fast paced, you're going to need to try and dispatch enemies quickly, and the game has got a massive amount of unlocks and abilities. It could do with more polish in terms of movement, enemy awareness, and improvements to the way that enemies react to hits, but overall the game's been lots of fun and it's a real change of pace compared to most of the others. Undead Citadel has got the most aggressive enemies. They literally run at you and attack very quickly, including some jump attacks. So you've got to be on your toes because they can attack you from behind without you realising they're even there. They are quick to kill unless they've got armour, so you can dispatch them quickly and it's all about numbers to make the game difficult. If you walk into them they simply slide back rather than having situations in some games where it gets janky as hell, which is a good solution. I think making sure that the enemies have a certain distance from the player is key to avoiding a lot of these janky clunky situations where things go funky. Undead Citadel and Battle Talent are both the faster paced combat games out of the five. Let's look at weapon handling and hand interaction. Blade and Sorcery hand interaction is great. Items have got a marker when your hand is focused on them, you then press the grip to raise them in the air and then the trigger button to warp them into your hand. You can also make them shoot forwards as well. Holster points are good with over the shoulder and a belt around your waist. You can adjust your grip while holding something by pressing the trigger. I'm not a massive fan of how two-handed weapons feel in this game, but one-handed weapons feel good with a good amount of weight to them. In Hellsplit Arena, picking things up from a distance can be tricky as there isn't a marker and I find it's just easier to bend over and literally grab it. Dropping weapons will float up making them easier to pick up. Your grip can be adjusted like Blade and Sorcerer with the trigger and you get a nice little hand animation when you move your hand up and down. I also prefer the feel of the two-handed weapons in this game and a sledgehammer is very satisfying to use. With Grimlord, grabbing things from a distance can be a bit finicky and they float up into the air into your hand a little slower than I would like. There is a bottle pouch on your belt where you can grab potions to heal and I find that I have to grab two or three times before it finally picks up what I want. You can also switch to different armour in the town and I find it's hard to find where the right spot is to grab it. Overall, it's okay but could use more work to get it to a more polished level where it does what you want consistently. Battle talent requires you to death grip the index controls to pick anything up, so it would be nice if they adjust the amount of force needed for index players to grab. You also can end up having the weapons facing the wrong way, which can be annoying and I would prefer the weapons to rotate into your hand so that you're holding them properly. There doesn't seem to be any way to adjust the grip other than quickly letting go and grabbing their weapon again. Undead Citadel has a force grab with items highlighting yellow when they're in focus. It can be very finicky to get your hand in the right spot, which can be frustrating when you're in a battle trying to pick up a weapon. Generally, hand interaction isn't the best either. You've got some locks that you need to open by grabbing a dial and twisting them in a certain order, but often you end up grabbing the entire lock instead of the dial. There are chests where you need to raise up a lever and then push open the chest and it can take multiple attempts to actually get the chest open. Weapons can feel a little floaty as well and not as responsive as you like. So what is it to actually do in these games? Blade and Sorcery is mostly a sandbox game with a few maps that you can spawn into and have waves of enemies coming at you to kill. They have got a procedural dungeon mode which keeps getting better so it's a point to point with a finish but there's still no progression or unlocks but this is in development and should be coming soon hopefully. The big appeal of this game is mod support, allowing modders to add lots of weapons and gadgets into the game for people to play with, but it's the least structured actual game out of the lot. Hellsplit Arena has got a campaign with currency and unlocks, 
but the campaign is just going to different levels and defeating progressively harder waves of enemies, then use the money that you've earned to unlock and buy new weapons and armour. It's better than Blade and Sorceries in that you do have progression and a reason to keep playing, but it's not the best. Mod support is on the way though, and some modders are actually currently working on a proper campaign with levels that you play through as well as NPCs that you interact with. The developers do keep updating the game, even though it's not early access, and recently added an update with guns. The mod support looks really promising, and it allows people to make content using the assets and levels that are already in the game. They can use the frameworks for the guns to import and make pretty much whatever they want, and if the modding community get behind it, I could see this becoming way more than a physics melee VR game. Grimlord is in early access, and only just released, so more content is coming. But this game has a story, interactive NPCs with voice acting, you gather resources on your way, and you can use that to craft new weapons at the blacksmith. You can find blueprints in the levels to open up more components to craft, and overall, it feels like a properly structured video game with levels and boss fights. I haven't actually finished it yet, but from what I've heard, it takes about 5-6 to six hours, with more levels coming. This is the closest thing to Dark Souls in VR, with the pacing and the combat. The level design, with the way that you can open up shortcuts, so that when you die, which you will, you don't have to do all the level all over again. It's a very tough, brutal game that some people have been craving for, and it has a surprising amount of depth, which I do like. Battle Talent is a roguelite. I don't personally like roguelites, so I wasn't massively expecting to enjoy this, but the way that the game's structured, you do have some really nice progression. Unlike other roguelikes that I've played, you don't have to start from the beginning of the levels each run. You have a little overview of the levels that you can do, which range from arena battles, dungeon runs and boss fights. Once you finish a boss fight at the end of each chapter, you start a new one which opens up new areas, new weapons and new enemies. I really like the structure of this game because it feels like you're progressing forward. You get points to use to unlock new powers and abilities, Levels give you specific weapons to use sometimes. Sometimes you get locked into a room with multipliers for certain actions, or some things that are taken away like health regen if that's a perk that you've got activated. It's a well put together game, and can be played for a significant amount of time, and it's getting regular updates. It also has mod support with a bunch of weapons and different avatars that you can input into the game, and mess around in with a sandbox level. Undead Citadel has got a proper story driven campaign, with voice acting and levels you progress through in a very linear fashion. There are light puzzle elements, buildings that you have to go inside to get keys or other things like a flaming torch to burn through something, and it feels like a more traditional video game. It's going to take about 5-6 to six hours to complete, so it's not the longest, but there is a horde mode for when you've finished. I find that the campaign is okay, the levels look very similar, and it could use more enemy variety. Overall, it's an okay single player hack and slash VR game, but it doesn't really do anything that interesting or different. What about graphics? Blade and Sorcery, the levels look okay, nothing special, but the procedural dungeons look really nice on PC and the headset. They've really impressed me with how good the game looks at times. The enemies look pretty bad though. I made a video showing how the enemies were downgraded from the PC only version to the Quest version, and unfortunately, they only have the Quest version of enemies now. They have very plastic looking skin, and a serious lack of detail. So it's a bit of a mixed bag, and not the best looking game in this bunch. Hellsplit Arena is the best looking game. It looks really nice in the headset, it's got great lighting as it uses Unreal Engine, the enemies have got really good attention to detail, with the chainmail looking really impressive. It's got beautiful environments with stunning backdrops in places, and I really love the look of this game, I just wish it wasn't just waves of enemies in arenas, but maybe mods will fix that. Grimlord looks okay, but can be a little rough around the edges in places, and you can tell it's being made by a small team. The textures can be a little low res in places, and the geometry just doesn't look that real at times with the outdoor sections with rocks and stuff looking like it's been thrown together. It's also got some really bad loading, where you've got really low poly versions of the game and the enemies, and then higher quality versions that pop in as they get closer. It's not terrible looking, and the overall gameplay loop and combat makes up for it. Battle Talent looks like a quest game. It doesn't look bad, but you can tell by the simple level design that this isn't a PC first game. The levels are very basic, with obvious procedural corridors that string together arena-like areas where you have to clear a few waves of enemies before you can move on. It looks okay, but it's nothing special. The enemies also look okay. I do love the variety of them in this game and how they feel to fight, which is good, and overall the game's structure and progression is enough to keep me playing. Undead Citadel is a disappointment for me. I've seen some people say it looks great, but personally I disagree. The levels are obviously copy and paste of the same few buildings, they've got grass coming out of the floor in sections which looks poor, 
They also have some really horrible film grain that can't be turned off, so everything looks grainy and a little bit blurry, which is the last thing you want in VR. Overall, it looks okay, but nowhere near as good in the headset compared to the videos of it. So let's quickly summarise each game. Blade & Sorcery is the oldest game here, launched over 4 years ago into Early Access, and it's still in Early Access. They're still doing regular updates, but this is a massively popular game that has earned a lot of money, so it's disappointing to see how slowly it's been developed, and it's still ultimately a sandbox type game with no progression or unlocks. Without the mods, I don't think it'd be that great in my opinion. It's also by far the most buggy and janky game, with enemies especially just getting all kinds of funky at times. If you like sandbox games and messing around with mods, Blade and Sorcery is fine, but for someone looking for an actual game with structure and progression, you need to look elsewhere. Hellsplit Arena was my favourite, and by far it looks the best. I like the combat, and the way that the enemies are animated and react. It could definitely use more variety to the enemy types, and the overall structure of the campaign could be better. But with a new mod support and a single player campaign being made for it, I can see this game getting back into my number one spot in the future. Grimlord has really surprised me. It's a very brutal game, with large gaps between checkpoints, and when you die, you have to do it again, but you can skip sections thanks to those shortcuts. It's as close to Dark Souls as you're going to get, and there is something about it that I enjoy more than I expected. Each time I jump in, I get a little better and deal with enemies faster. It feels like you're not only just getting stronger from better weapons, but you're also learning to be a better player, and I really enjoy the slower paced combat and how you really need to think about your positioning. Battle Talent is probably my number one, just behind Grimlord and Hellsplit Arena. I really like the fast paced combat, the constant unlocks, and the way it throws you in a new level with a specific weapon so you can't just use your favourite weapon throughout. This is the one that I recommend to anyone looking for something to replace Blade and Sorcery, and both this and Grimlord are both games that aren't afraid to punish the player, and it feels like they've had real thought put into the balance of the gameplay and giving the player a great sense of progression. Undead Citadel is a disappointment. It currently has mixed reviews on Steam, which is how I feel about it overall. It's not terrible, but it falls short of great. It's just okay, and please, for the love of God, give me an option to turn off the film grain. They also really need to work on the audio for enemies. You can barely hear them move around, and I've got jump scared so many times with a bad guy creeping up on me and being right in my face when I turn around, or even worse, stabbing me in the back, leaving me frustrated. And that's it. Let me know which you've played and which are your favourite, and as always, thank you so much to my Patreons and YouTube members.